previously on Interiors by Design, the contestants went on a jolly boat cruise. They learnt about colours, two fall out, and Lacon makes one of the final three. This week, Tayo, Ife and Lecon meet the best of the best in the interior design industry. So welcome guys to, uh, to Miliki. This is the space, it's um, a members lounge, which I um, founded and used as a, an opportunity to show my design style exactly as I want it, without any um, restrictions or anything from clients. So as we say in Miliki, please have a seat. I'll take that one. <laughs> Starting out, they met with Patrick Koshoni, a renowned design expert with years of industry experience. He gives them tremendous insight into being a successful design and shares his success story. Of course, this came with interesting questions. Our signature colour is orange. Ah. We always find a place to leave so it. So you leave a bit of orange. Somewhere, <laughs> but not where you would normally expect it. I wanted you to talk to our budding interior designers. Just tell us, you know, what it's really like to be a successful interior designer in Nigeria. Just give us some of your, your wisdom, basically. Thank you anyway for uh, using the word successful. That's very helpful. What I have to say is that each job will bring up through its own challenges. You must have some, um, you must rely upon some tested solutions, which you will find out that most jobs come up with the same red flags. And with time and with experience, you get to use the same solutions and tweak it a little to suit each particular situation. Malik is a membership lounge, private, open exclusively to members and their guests. The whole idea here, in terms of from a design point of view, was to create uh, an escape uh, from people from the daily grind of leisure establishments. <music> Unique selling points here are quietness to a certain extent, so the music is always played at a certain level. The furniture is to help you to relax. It's not a waiting room. The furniture is help to, the placement of the furniture, for example, is to create um, a forum for people to come together and discuss socially, business, whatever it is that they're, they're, they're interested in. Um, the lighting, which you really can't tell now because of the um, technical lights that are on, are to create an ambience that it's cool, um, not in your face, doesn't light you up too much because one of the um, selling points is also privacy. So there's a lot in the style and in the design that actually lends itself to the business objective. So that's another thing. While you're coming up with so many designs, you've got to remember that you, you have to be limited by the objective, the business objective. So in your case, mostly it will be the client's requirements. How does that apply if you have foreign clients that you can't really meet? That's a good <laughs> question. Um, I haven't had yet a foreign client in Nigeria who I haven't met mm. because the information they have to give me to, co to get me started of course can be purely v um, written and we can just email. go by email but the dynamics of our economic reality here is that most people are not so trusting. How do they know if after giving you the written instructions they make the payments you move to Kutonu? Mm. So in Nigeria, a lot of businesses face to, to face. face. 
we get to a point where we think how do we get new business how do you get new clients how do you expand because doing a one-man practice just you and your secretary you know you want to expand into a bigger space you need to reach more people how would you break that block okay first thing you need a lucky break mm. now when you get that lucky break take it as your first and last job in this peculiar environment that we are we are in Nigeria where design is not a known skill or an industry you're only as good as your last job so you give that job all you can sometimes you even have to make a loss when you you know you've given the client solid value irreplaceable value or value that what I mean irreplaceable is that you can't get the same thing for 100k anywhere else yeah. you put your life into that project I'll tell you, leave the rest to Providence. Mm. You can't control all the situations. You've done the, your best work. It will generate a kind of, some kind of interests that will link you to your next job. So as I was saying, as an industry in its infancy, how do you think we can drive interior design in a direction where people learn to understand the value that interior designers are adding. Like I always say, um, the architect is understood and appreciated. The engineer who oh. builds the building yeah. is the, the, the guy, don, the don <laughs> because um, he actually physically brings the building up as, they, as, as, it, as it were. Yeah. Um, the interior designer, who is that? Uh, what does he do? Um, what has he done? Mm. Is it not about choosing chairs and choosing colors? Why do and... I need one. Ah, if that is what is it entails, mm. I can do it I myself. Do it. <laughs> They're thinking about an interior decorator. Mm. However, yeah, the interior yeah. designer's work and role comes before the interior decoration work. But it's a very blurred line. Mm. And we all know what the interior designer does. He influences, let's call it the, the, the shape of the building from the functionality in, from the inside. But the client really doesn't know that the interior designer's role is actually between decorating and the engineer's finished work. So you've got to come in from that level when you're approaching clients. But first, when we talk about one-on-one, -on -one, between a interior designer and a client. Never sell yourself short. Don't say because I want this job so badly that I'm going to accept a fee that will not meet my living requirements. You've got to stand for yourself and you've got to stand for the industry. That's such a good answer and that, that's such a good place to, to end our time with you today. Thank you so much once again, Patrick. That was very insightful. Ife, Leko and Tayo have learned quite a lot about the interior design business. Next up, Blast from the Past. The contestants met with Mr. Fowora. MD of AFP Construction. He's a construction project manager who has worked on large international project Heathrow Terminal 5, an Arsenal stadium in the UK. Mr. Fora is here with us today to talk to us about project management skills. Share with us some of his many years of experience in that field. So thank you, Mr. Fora, for being with us today. You're very welcome. What is a project? You know, a project is defined by um, an endeavor that is unique and that also has a start and a finish. And the reason why we need project management is that when a project gets to a particular scale, there's so many things that can go wrong. You know, there are three major um, things that we need to monitor, and that is time, quality, and cost. And all these three things are fighting each other, and it all comes down to you. Project management is, is something you, that you get used to more and more as you develop your career. But I think now what is really useful is that you start to get used to the language of project management. You understand what is the initiation stage, um, development stage, execution, 
monitoring projects, all these things that are the, as, is, that forms a language as you basically get to work with different parts of the team. Would you say it's a good work ethic or a bad work ethic if you always change contractors on different jobs? Most of the time it's down to non-performance. Um, you know, I had this experience before. It's very, very difficult to change a contractor because the impact is on everybody else on the project, especially when they're far down the line. And they know that as much as you do. You're not going to want to change your contractor when your structure is halfway up. Somebody else that comes, there are other things that you have to consider. You see, somebody taking on somebody else's job doesn't know all the details of that job, doesn't know the risks that are inherent in that particular structure. Because once they take it up from there, they then also take on the responsibility for it. So nobody wants to do that. So the, the, what I would say to you is, be very, very, very sure about who you want to go with at the beginning of the project. It's the most important thing. Choose your team very, very wisely. Because it is near impossible to change halfway through. People do it, but then they learn from their mistakes. And because you pay very heavily, yeah. um, either with financial penalties, delays, you know, it's the it's it's the it's absolutely the wrong place that you that you want to end up at. So make sure you have got the right team from the start. That's what I'm saying. Also, Mr. Michael Banjo, the visionary behind the Decor and Rainbow Creative Agency, which operates both in the UK and Nigeria. The organization has one of the fastest growing design teams in the UK, as well as a fantastic training establishment here in Nigeria. Today we're with Mr. Michael Banjo of the Decor and Rainbow Creative International Agency. Thank you for having me, I appreciate You're welcome. it. Welcome. I love, I love creativity, I love things, anything to do with uh, you know, looking at a space and making it blossom, making mm. it function. And ten years later, after working in various organisations, uh, designing spaces for them, I decided to set up my own agency. I've always been interested in doing something in Nigeria, but you know, we could actually look at creating a, a hub, an arm of the business in Nigeria and work remotely. You know, you've got a creative hub there, you've got design teams here, but why not? do something in Nigeria. Hence why we launched the, the Deco and Rainbow brand in um, Nigeria last year. There were, there were institutions offering training here and there, but I felt that um, perhaps we could do more in terms of uh, an offering. So we created the, um, a, a training diploma, and the idea is to give um, you know, uh, an outlet for people who are interested in the profession who are looking to develop, uh, to have a, 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 an in-depth knowledge, mm. as well as practical experience on how, you know, how the industry works. And then whilst we're doing that, we're also open to a business for interior mm. design work. So that's where we're at, and that's been the journey really. It's usually said that um, to do an interior design for your space, you need to have money like it's most people think that to, if you do an interior design, you must be rich. Mm. Do you have a strategy to do an interior design for the common man, for the average? And because most average um, families, they don't really see yeah, doing a, an interior design as something they can afford. But I think because of the population, it, 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 could, it could happen here. It's not a mass market service, I don't think yeah. so. But I think with the growing middle class in Nigeria, it could start there and then can move on to sort of the upper class and obviously the elite. Yeah. Where perhaps in the UK th that middle class is not necessarily there, it's almost from the upper class to elite yeah. to take a professional design services. Nigeria has the advantage because of the population to have the growing middle class to tap into that. Yeah. And that's something that's quite interesting. Yeah. This show has been an eye-opener for me actually. I think the contestants are really, really serious about this thing, you know? 
And they really want to win. I'm guessing they're very nervous at this present time. I would be. Uh, they, they, they should be proud of what they've done because they're down to the last three. I know you started with 14, but you would have had a lot of other auditions before you even selected your uh, uh, shortlist of 14. So they, they can be incredibly proud of what they've done. This show will open the eye of an individual who's watching this program. I think from the first episode, they're going to be hooked. The industry needs some more awareness. We need to unlock the potential we have here. And um, shows like this can only go a long way in actually helping uh, the industry grow and achieve that sort of ultimate aim of uh, getting to a level where, you know, it's international standards. The quality of the work that's actually been coming out as well, you know, week in, week in, week out. Yeah, fantastic product and uh, great team because they watch how um, the contestants are taken through a whole series of tasks. And these tasks are basically getting um, more interesting as the series develops, because of course, their competence is also developing as the series develops. So I think the same thing will happen to the viewer. Well, so much has been said, plus the contestants feel motivated, inspired, and ready to move on to the next challenge. Are they really ready for success? The lead judge, Mentor, Titi Fawara, and judge, Osaru, are ready for the contestants. The contestants are asked to sell themselves. Who gives it 100% and impresses the judges? Who is tired? Tell, who is tired? Sorry. Tell me who tired. I'm a creative person. I'm a creative mind. I like to see the design in everything. Like the other day, I was talking about people in color. Some people say I'm weird sometimes when I talk about stuff like that, but you know, I'd like to see, I like to relate my work to the things I do. I'm someone who believes in balance mostly. So yeah, sometimes I can be conservative, you know, and there are times when I just take a leap and yeah, I like to get the job done. I think that's my goal. I'm driven by my results. So I like to see how it turns out in the end. I didn't really come just for the competition, just to win. And I, I came to expand, you know, my reach. Yes, networking. Where do you see yourself in five years? I want to have a signature. You know, you can, when you go to Picasso, you're not expecting realism. You're expecting abstract. You're expecting cubism. So I want them to come to me because I am, I am known for something. Hi, Fe. Hello, Hello. Fe. Why do you want to win this? I want to win this because there are so many things I, I see about design. There are so many changes that I would like. I know I can't make the changes on my own, but that's why in particular I was interested in what um, the second speaker had to talk about. Today? Yes. Structure is very important for me because it's just something that I feel if there is structure, we would actually, there are so many things that happen that wouldn't happen. I mean, I see a time where interior design, I mean, interior designer will be part of the list of the stakeholders in a project. Mm, yeah, what is your five-year five plan? <laughs> okay. My five-year plan is that to have contributed to the design society um, in, in that contributed to projects, big projects that you can say, oh, it was Ife Olaori 4, you know, design, or it was Ife Olaori 4, CC interiors, <laughs> yes. so. That is my, my fight. And for me to see interior design to have gone like further, I mean, people are coming up, telling their parents, I want to study interior design, and their parents are cool with it, and they're not like, oh my God, you've killed me. Tell me why you came to this show to begin with. Why are you here? I actually just finished from University of Lagos. Um, I studied architecture. And though in school, the way we've been taught, we've not really, it not really taught us how, how I feel that um, architecture should be taught. So I sort of decided to divert into something else. I started doing 3Ds, visuals, designing spaces. Generally, that's how I started off. Then further, I now moved into trying to really design an interior space. Well, I've gained exposure from this challenge because I've been to places, I've met people who are actually experienced, fellow consultants who are actually experienced in interior design. I've learned from them, I've learned from 
the judges, I've learned from the places I've been. My worst challenge is actually the paints at Pop Beach. The tension rise higher. Who goes back to the drawing board? If I go home, well, I came back and shocked everybody. If I continue, one more challenge left to the price. It was very full, you know. Tension is now higher than before because <laughs> there are only three people left and one person has to go. If I had to walk home now, I, I would be sad, but I'm happy to be part of the top three. It's added experience and <laughs> I know anywhere I'll go in this Nigeria, and I mentioned this, I would be looked up to. It won't be a terrible thing to be second runner up. At least I know I have given my best. Hi, guys. Um, first thing first, I want to congratulate you guys for actually making it this far. Top knock, Jerry. Ciao. Ciao. I know, it's, I know it's been no easy feat. I mean, initially we were 14, you guys were 14. And now it's down to the final three. So minutes time actually okay. would only be two. I yeah. mean, it is what it is. Like it's only two people that can move on. Okay. Of course, everybody is hoping like it's not them, but yeah. one of us is going to be disappointed. This program has—it's been a very, very fruitful venture. Yeah. I call it that. Nico, imagine you want this, you know, you want this content. I mean, how how do you think that would make you into like a, a better designer, a better architect? Going through this process has helped me since I'm pretty much just entering into the whole interior design game. Mm. And winning this would actually step me up mm -hmm. in the industry. Definitely. And expose me better. It's actually an added bonus, whether or not I move on or I, I'm kicked out today. The experience is there, it can be removed. I'm actually looking forward to winning. Tyre seems a sure bet. <laughs> I'm really thinking if I would win now, if I don't win. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, the judges are done with deliberation. As you know, our finale is around the corner. Someone's going to have to go back to the drawing board today. So I guess we're just going to go right into it. Um, I'll start with Tayo. Yeah. I sense, and I think Mrs. Fora said this before, it's like an architect morphing into an interior designer. And I still see that. And I think today, when you spoke again, I felt it again, that mm -hmm. this is someone who is architect background, but there's just an interior design sensibility to you. Yeah, you cannot so. work alone as an interior designer. Yeah. It's impossible. You didn't speak in isolation. You talked about what you wanted to do and what you wanted to do for the industry. I know. And when you talked about, you know, people working in teams rather than just as individuals, I, I saw that, you know, the power of the collective was what came to my mind when you said that. Lekon, you have a lot of technical strength. I think is probably your, your biggest selling point, which is always a good positive. Mm. There's some things that are still missing for me. You need to be able to sell yourself. And that's what we wanted from you today. I felt like I didn't really get that, but presentation is key. To be honest, I'll say it to you now, I'm glad we brought you back. Because I also feel like even after you came back, you grew. Yes, definitely. So you do have the potential to keep going. You just have to recognize that that is what you need to work at. Uh, finalists would be... Sweat dripping and drums rolling. And... Ife, Antayo, and sadly for Lekon, back to the drawing board. But very, very well done. I'm actually, personally, I'm very proud of you. Ife, Antayo, Antayo congratulations. we'll see you at the, at the finals. Sadly, it's back to the drawing board for Lekon, but that makes him the second runner-up on the show. Rock on, man! I've met a lot of interesting people. I've met professionals in the field. I've learned from them, and gained a lot that would help me in my career. Following a wonderful journey of multitudes of aspiring interior designers at the auditions, 14 contestants made the cut. The die has been cast down to the final two. Ife and Tayo, as they will fight a battle of their lives in the finale. Who wins the design course at the prestigious Decor and Rainbow Interior Design Academy 
in London. Share your thoughts on social media with the hashtag Back to the Drawing Board. We would like to hear from you. Follow us on Red TV, Interiors by Design, for more engaging updates. Tune in same time, same place to catch the contestants in action on Interiors by Design. Oh.